let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. That's a good verse, isn't it? Yeah, that's great. Anyone else have a scripture that stood out to them? That's an excellent one. It's hard to remember sometimes, isn't it? Because you read a lot sometimes during the week and listen to so much, don't we? And uh, it's sometimes hard to remember. Something stands out one day and then you get something else the next day, don't you? Well, we'll stick with that one, Kim. I think that's pretty good. Galatians 6 9. Okay. Let's not grow weary while doing good. For in due time we will reap. We will reap. Right. Isn't that a great promise? We will reap. The other sort of things we've got to claim now, when we get those verses, this is when we need to be claiming those verses. Lord, we are going to uh, claim the reaping this week. I claim the reaping, I claim the strength to help me walk into the reaping of what you are going to do during this week. You know, this is how we need to be praying. Friday night was a really good night up at One in Christ. And um, it was so good because because Will just, Will Wiseman just started it off. And wasn't that wonderful? I was so thrilled for him. I sent him a text yesterday and said, man, that was so good. You know, and... Uh, he didn't have to say much, but it was just what God wanted to say. And then everybody followed it, you know. I, I'd got along there thinking, Lord, I hope that, you know, please keep this in somehow in some order because we're going to have all sorts of different opinions and thoughts and, you know, all the rest of it. And yet the Lord did that, didn't he? He kept it in line with his purposes. And it was a lovely night with all the different people there who were from different churches, quite a few different churches, probably six to eight different churches, I'd say, maybe more. So that was really encouraging. And our one in Christ brothers and sisters are so good, aren't they? Um, their company was wonderful and input. And <laughs> I got up there and I said, oh, you know, the uh, email gets through that I sent to you, Pastor Homer. And he said, no, no. So I had all this slide stuff put up. And uh, it had can't believe how it didn't get through. It just didn't get through. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of his girls was there and she just grabbed the phone, took it out of my hand and she, you know what the young people are like, you know, <laughs> walks away and the next minute the whole thing's up until it's all done and it's, it's there. <laughs> no, the problem. So, no, the devil didn't yeah. win that one. He didn't win that one at all. So that was, that was good. It was fantastic. So bless the Lord, we're going to continue with those, those nights and pray. It's a critical time in our city, I believe. So, so let's pray. You know the words that are sitting in my mind this morning? is that song, He Lifted Up. He Lifted Up. Let's pray. And let's do that. Let's lift Him up. Because okay? those are the words that are in my heart. It's been a hard week for probably a few of us. We're just busy, maybe, for others. But what we need to do is lift him up. Thank you, Lord. So we do that. We do that. You might want to play that song really quietly. Uh, up there, guys. Terry. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we lift you up. You know, we need the Word and the Spirit, don't we? We just need the... Holy Spirit you know, to fall upon us. Because we want to lift you up. You break through the barriers and all the things that would weigh us down and come over our thinking. And we put our focus completely on Him and see Him. If you can't see Him lifted up and exalted, high and above everything else. Thank you. 
your promises and bow before you. Yes. To fall. morning, don't just listen, do it, lift him up, speak it out if you need to. Spirit for moving in every heart here this morning now. Every situation, every area, every thought. Thank you, Spirit of God, for moving. We need you, Lord God. We need you. Praise your name. Praise your name. Thank you. Thank you for the weight of your word to come upon us. Come upon us in power and strength, oh God, with the weight of your word. Thank you, Lord. Go deep into our hearts with your word. We pray. Lord, we open ourselves up to you this morning. Praise the Lord. This is good, the good to drink in the Lord is not to come draw near to Him with all of our hearts, and then He will draw near to us. So we're going to look at a uh, verse that we, we actually sort of briefly looked at it Friday night. But I really felt like I should dig into this verse, or try to, or two verses actually, in Colossians chapter 2. You know, this... This verse, wow, these two verses are just enormous. And as we head into Easter, uh, this special time, uh, 
there to focus upon the glory and the supremacy and the greatness of our, of our God. I think this is probably a good couple of scriptures. I, I have to say that um, it might sound silly, I suppose, but these, these two verses almost scare the pants off me. <laughs> they're, just, um, they're just so big. And yet, I felt yesterday to just try and press in. And, and I, I don't even pretend to have got maybe even scratched the surface, as we say, of these two verses. But I think we need to go back to here. You know, where our theme has been that God is building his church. He's rebuilding his church. Up again. <coughs> you know, the foundations have been shaky. They've been shifted. They're, they've been weak. Our belief has been weak. Our faith has been weak. Things have slowly, as they do, they slowly move away, don't they, things? And we slip away from things. Mm -hmm. And we just said to someone the other day, you know, we used to have healing meetings years ago, and we're not seeing any of those. And different areas of the church that used to be so strong have slipped, haven't they? So gradually. And this is what happens. You see people who, I've seen people over the years who say, oh yeah, I just, I just can't make it this week to, to church. I think, you know, God's leading me to do this or that. Then it's the next week and then slowly it's the next and then it's the next and then they're gone. Right. And, and you know, you can see, you grieve over the progression of what happens, don't we? Yeah. And yet now, the good thing is God is turning things around. He's turning it around, running. We're, we're seeing the little embryo of it beginning now. Um, because it's going to be so big, what he does. But we're, we're seeing just a little small beginning. Hallelujah. But then we're going to get to a point where it ramps up like that, exponentially ramp up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we probably won't know what to do. <laughs> of course we won't. It'll, it'll be huge. But this is what God's doing. He's turning it around. But as he turns it around, he's rebuilding those things that undergird the church. Because when he does move, we can't be weak and faltering in our faith and our belief, mm. can we? We won't, we won't walk through it. No. This is what he's doing, strengthening mm. our foundations. Mm. And doing it gently. Slowly, we might want it to happen quicker, but he's doing it. Because he knows how much we can cope, doesn't he? That's right. And we can't cope with everything too suddenly. So we're looking at this uh, couple of verses now. Oh, and I must say that when God is rebuilding, he's rebuilding us on the, the right foundation. Oh. The right foundation. Oh. And we'll see in a moment what that is. And really, what is the rock foundation is the power and the majesty of Christ Jesus. Yes. That's what he's rebuilding his church on. The world has, has just brought so many other distractions to us, hasn't it? Yes. There's so much around that can take. So many great teachers, you know, some aren't great. <laughs> so many programs, so many this and that, that can take out. I thought about yesterday, I thought... There's never been hardly anything in my lifetime that I can think that could be <coughs> so much of a distraction all around me. The internet, everything, tech, emails, millions of emails. So many distractions to keep us from seeing who we need to see. Yeah. And we give so much time to that. Let's, let's look at the verse. For in him, Colossians 2, did I say that? Yes. Colossians 2, verse 9 and 10 is our key verses. We'll read the rest before that in a minute. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. Now this is New, uh, New King James, so some of you might have a slightly different wording. But I like how succinct it is in the New King James. And I'll read it again. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. Who is the head of all principality and power? Mm -hmm. I keep looking at that 
first this year, you know, wow, God, wow, it's so big, it's so huge. You have to dwell on it and try and get your head around it, you know, when you look at it. The whole context of the verse is, is Paul, the Apostle Paul, who's, well, we need to look at his context, don't we? Well, why he was writing it, and it was probably written in, in AD 61 when he was in prison. And uh, he sent the, the letters off via Titius to Epaphras in uh, Colossians. Now, it's interesting, Colossae, he, he hadn't even visited Colossae, the Colossian church. He hadn't even got there. And yet, his heart was for these people. And he sends the, these letters off while he's in prison, in his first prison time, uh, over by Atitius, his faith, one of his faithful followers. And Epaphras, we think, was probably, or well, scholars think, but was probably the leader of the church in, in Colossae. And so he sends this off, and, it's, and it shows his heart. Because he was concerned about this whole thing of, of the, the deity of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the supremacy of Christ being diluted and downgraded by the teachers of the day. There was heretical teachers getting around. Sound familiar? Yeah? Yeah. Heretical teachers getting around that were virtually saying, <laughs> this is so funny, that God wasn't really fully God or man. Okay? Now, have we heard that lately? Yeah. You know, the, some of the theology that, that Jesus had to be saved, you know, mm -hmm. that he wasn't fully God, he wasn't fully man. You know, we, we have all sorts of other odd teachers and we can, teachings we can dig up. But this is what was happening back there. The same as what we're seeing right now. The dilution of the supremacy of Jesus Christ and who he was as fully man and fully God. And so he's really concerned about this. He's really concerned about the, this whole thing, the absolute lordship and, and sufficiency of Christ. And the New King James Bible says, study Bible says that um, there, there was pluralism, two big words, and syncretism. So we know syncretism and, and that, it's a blending, and there's pluralism, a blending. But the New King James Bible describes it as a diluting of the truth for the sake of unity. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. When I heard that, I thought, ooh, a diluting of the truth for the sake of unity. Wow. I thought, what? That's exactly now, isn't it? Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Isn't that incredible? Oh, we have to be inclusive. Oh, so the truth gets diluted. And this is and this is the manipulation and the control of the world to try and get into the church now and, uh, and make us feel like we're, we're wrong. <laughs> they, they think, trying to put it on us that we're wrong. Isn't that always the way? Mm -hmm. every, every other religion gets glossed over except Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. We say, we hear it on the news. <laughs> so, it's a loading of the truth for the sake of unity. And Paul, the Apostle Paul was so concerned about this he sends this letter to the, to the Colossians. And it's just like we should be concerned, in a way, about where we are at, too. Because God is building us up to come against this stuff. It, it is, I said Friday night that we're in a battle, and we are in a battle. Yes. We don't like to hear that, but we are in a battle. Absolutely. And whether God uses you to, uh, mm. to battle with song and worship, whether he uses you in intercession, however he uses prophetic declaration, you know, mm. however he uses you, <coughs> and then we're in a battle. Mm. Because remember what we said last time? We are the next move of God. Mm -hmm. We are the next move of God. Yes. We're praying for revival and, and we want the whole of the body of Christ to, to be you know, moved into an awakening of God. But you and I, we are the next move of God. And God can only, might only use you to bring an encouraging word or, or whatever it might be. You know, Richard did it to me the other day. He sent me a great book. It was great. 
Carol sent me Psalm 40 the other day. You know, it might be a little word that you, that you bring to somebody. But God is using us to be the next word of God. Mm -hmm. So I sat down with this verse. <coughs> oh, the battery's coming out. <laughs> I don't know. Is it the morning of the batteries? <laughs> it must be the morning of the batteries. That's all right, I'll take care of it. So I'm like, yeah, can you hear me all right, okay? Yeah. So I sat down with this verse and I thought, wow, God, where do I start? Because this verse keeps blowing me away when I look at it. And I thought, wow, how do we get our grapplers around this? For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All the grace, all of the spirit, all the wisdom, all the love, all the mercy. <coughs> In him dwells all the fullness of the God in bodily. Keep in mind what we're talking about, the, the delusion of Jesus Christ and who he is. You know, in, in this world now, he's just seen as something from history, isn't he? Mm -hmm. and, and sadly, even within the church, you know, he's still living. It's the morning of the batteries. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? And I thought, oh, how we need a fresh revelation in the church of who Jesus Christ is. How we need that. Don't we ever? <coughs> See the, the diminishing of Jesus. The one in whom all the fullness, you've got to get this verse in your head. Amen. The one in whom all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Yes. This is him. This is who we need to look at. Like I said before, I, I, I think slowly but surely things happen. And what's happened is that we've given so much of our sight and our thinking and, and you know, all of that to other things. Think about it. Think about it. how much we give our thinking and our, our all of that to other things in our life. And how much do we give to looking upon Him and sitting still and looking at Him and thinking about Him. Thinking about the one whom in all the, the all the Godhead was in. The deity was in Him. How much do we give to that? Mm -hmm. It's pretty awesome, isn't it, when you think about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I sat down yesterday and I was trying, I was trying to not think about what I had to do, but trying to just put my eyes upon him and give him that, that time that we need to give him. Because otherwise I would have been off here giving my time to this and to that. How much time do I give to emails sometimes? Oh boy. I get really good at deleting quickly the end of these days, you know, just and it's gone. You know. How much do I give to so much else? But do, do I look at the the glorious Christ? Does the church see the glorious Christ that we serve and love and know has loved us since before we were born? Before you were born, isn't it? It's awesome, Psalm 139, isn't it? Before we were born, he's planning out our life. Every little bit of it he planned it out for us. Yeah. That's how excited he was about you and me. Every little bit of it. How much do we see? Do we look upon him? Paul had this, this comprehension. If you look at this verse and meditate on it, you'll see Paul must have had this comprehension back, in, you know, back then. And, and he's, he understands it. Christ was... The Godhead bodily. Mm. He understood it. He grasped something really awesome, didn't he? If you think back about it, yeah. what a divine revelation it was to him. Yeah. And he's saying to these, these Colossian people who have got all sorts of distractions around about them, 
You know, there was occult worship, there was Gnosticism, there was um, emperor worship, Caesar worship, there was everything around about these guys to distract them. And, and it wasn't kosher back then to say that there was one king, one God above all things. It wasn't kosher because you, you were likely to end up as, as lion KFC. Mm. Like, you know, yeah. you, you're going to be fed for dinner. Mm. Because back then, if you didn't say the Caesar was the king, mm. the ultimate king, that was it. That was their, their problem with Christianity. Wow. You can believe whatever you liked. But if you didn't acknowledge Caesar as king, that was it. Wow. That's why you went to the lions. Mm. But Paul had this comprehension. And each of us in the church, in, the, in this church day and age, we need to, I believe God's going to give us, if we're, we're open, if we're wanting it, God's going to give us this comprehension of, of Christ that Paul had. It was huge. He is supremely Lord of all. Mm -hmm. This is what we stand for. Yeah. This is what we will have to, to live and verbally say as we go forward in these next number of years. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all. Come what may, whatever that costs us, we will need to proclaim that. This is our battle to proclaim the supremacy of Christ, as Paul did here. If we talk about a battle, this, this is our battle to proclaim who he is and never dilute him or diminish him at all. Because this is what the world wants. He wants to relegate him to all the other gods in the world. All the other gods. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead by him. Well, I got that far, and it doesn't feel like I've even done it justice. <laughs> I got that far, and I thought, Lord, I'm pretty happy. I've got that far. So Scott, you can imagine I've broken it up into three things. And the next one is number two, and, and, and that is, and, and you are complete in him. So we've got the first section, for in him dwells all the fullness of the God here bodily. Stop. And now we're looking at it. And you are complete in him. And I thought, oh God, this is an even bigger mind blower. Like, I thought my glasses were going to pop off just about. I thought, <laughs> so this is huge. This, it really scares me. So I, I can't grapple my head around the fact. And you are complete in him. Now that's New King James Version. Other versions will say another word. Will, some will say you've been filled. You've been filled. It says in you have been given fullness. Fullness is the other word that's used. Yeah. I, I bought the living. I got the living. Who, who's read the living Bible before? The original living. I love the original living. It's really good. And it talks about being filled with God. He goes, so when you have everything, you have, I'm sorry, you have, so you have everything when you have Christ. And you are filled with God through your union with Christ. That's how the, the living says it. Mm. When I read that, it sort of helped me. So I thought, how, how massive is this? Think about it. And you are complete in Him. So, what is that really saying? I, I tried to grasp it. And I, I think language breaks down sometimes with the Bible, doesn't it? Almost. The Bible puts out something there that you, you, if you try to grab it, you know, I can't put language to something sometimes. But this was my feeble attempt. I thought, what it's saying is when you have Christ in your life, when you have Christ in your life, you have everything that you need to walk in the will of God mm -hmm. and become more like Christ. Mm -hmm. Say it again. When you have Christ in your life, you have everything that you need to walk in the will of God and become more like Christ. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, wow, God. 
It's a lot of things that we can rattle off in Christianity, can't we? But it, it almost needs a jackhammer to get through down into your spirit so that you receive it. You receive it. It's pretty awesome. I thought, wow, that helps me a little bit. When you have Christ in your life, you, you have everything that you need. See, and you are complete in Him, it says. And if you go to the word, the word that they uh, translate complete in New King James, or filled, or fullness in your Bibles, it's really interesting. It, it, it helps me again. Because it's a... a I, tried, I tried for about 15 minutes to try and pronounce this word. But it sort of goes like, Play room. Play room. This is this is the word or play room. And, and it, I, I looked it up in the Strongs and you can put it in as complete or, or fill, fullness or filled. Um, and this is what it's this is what it says. It says to fill to the full. This is what this word means. So this is what God is saying, and you are complete or filled, filled with the Godhead. You are filled with the Godhead. This is you and I. Wow. You are filled with the Godhead. Mm -hmm. goes on. It says to make full, to fill up, to fill to the full. And then it says literally to cram, to cram full. Wow. I thought, wow, how interesting is that? To fill to the top. So this is Strong's. To render full, to complete. Complete, completely full with the Godhead. I thought, wow, when you are complete or filled with the Godhead in Him, when Christ is Lord of our lives. Mm. And we need to make that distinction more and more, don't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because God's heart is for those in the church who know Him and believe in Him but don't have a personal relationship with him. I, I think, maybe I'm too bold in saying it, but I think God's heart is for all those in the church who know about God, believe, but they don't have a personal relationship with him. I fear they're the ones that will get to heaven and God might say, you, you call me Lord, but I never knew you. Um, I don't say that critically, I just say that because it's my concern. And it should be all of our concern. But we will probably see more and more people like this who know about God, but don't personally know Him. And here it is, you know, what God says if you've really, if you've really come to know Him as Lord, this, this is the ultimate. We're talking about the supremacy and sufficiency of Christ. There's, there's no halfway measure. We, we are, it's like being married. You're either married or you're not. You can't be halfway in between. You're either saved or you're not. Jesus is either Lord or he's not. We, we either follow him or we don't follow him. Amen. This, is, this is where it's at. It's, there's no grey in between. He's, he's filled us to the full, to make complete. It even says to render perfect. To render perfect. And then it goes on and says it can even mean to abound and to be liberally supplied. Wow. How's that for richness of a word, eh? To be liberally <coughs> supplied. I thought, wow, God, you're making it harder for me. <laughs> I had to grab hold of the, the depth of this word. You, you, you're getting where I'm coming from. Yes. The depth and the weight of this word, these scriptures. Yes. We, we read over stuff really quickly, don't, you? don't we, sometimes? Mm. I did it this morning. I was reading my devotions and I, and I realized that I was half thinking of something else as I was reading what I was... And I had to stop myself, pull myself up, mm. and just go back over it and make my mind really focus. Ask the Spirit to help me focus. I thought, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit more of this God. And I had this funny thought. It might sound funny to you. I thought, I thought just imagine that a light comes on in your room. Right? 
in your bedroom, three in the morning, a light comes on, shines in the room, and it's not your next door neighbour looking for a little poodle, shining her torch through your window. It's, it's not that. Light comes on, and really, what it is, it's a divine visitation. Okay? You're having a divine visitation. And the divine messenger speaks to you and says, looks at you and you're shuddering in fear and looks at you and says, you are filled with the Godhead, the fullness of God. Everything, go and do what I've told you to do. Just imagine what you'd be like after that. The light goes out. You'd either be shaking in fear or you're bouncing off the roof with joy or running around the house going, praise God, praise God. What an impact it would make on you, wouldn't it? I mean, if it didn't, you'd, you'd, you're dead inside. I mean, that, that's it. Just imagine you were told you're filled with the fullness of God. Go and do it. You'd be empowered, wouldn't you? You'd be empowered. Oh, we have to get to that point of revelation. Oh. We have to. We've been told. We've been told, haven't we? Yeah. We've already been told in the Word. So this is what I reckon God's getting at. He's trying to get us to grasp the enormity of what He's given us through Christ. Mm. He's trying to get us to grasp it. Mm. And if we race over the verses, <laughs> we don't get it, do we? No. He's trying to get the whole church to move with the power and the authority of God. <coughs> because that's what we've got. Mm. That's what we've got. And if we grasp it, if we even begin to grasp a bit of it, we're going to be enormous. It's going to be enormous. Our faith will begin to go. Faith will be up here. We'll begin to step out. So I think I said this a few weeks ago that that bishop in Denmark um, said that if you if you know who you are, you will know what to do. Yeah, and he said that as as the Nazis were while well, marching into Denmark and all these priests ran to him or came to his home and they were all freaking out because the Nazis were coming in and they were ready to you know, do what they do. And, and that's when he said, they said to him, what can we do? We don't know what to do. And he says, if you know who you are, you'll know what to do. You know? And so this is, this is what this is all about. If you know who we are, if we know who we are, that we're filled with the fullness of God, even if we get it a bit, we're going to know what to do. And things happen, we're going to know what to do. When someone's sick, we're going to know what to do. We're going to command it to go, that sickness. Mm -hmm. Depending on what your gifting is, you're going to know what to do. Mm -hmm. Because of this, the fullness, filled with the fullness. We've been told. <laughs> We've been told. So the last little bit of it is, the last third and last bit is this. Who is the head of all principality and power? Who is the head of all principality and power? What does NIV say? Yeah, you've got to open it. Who is head over every power and authority? Who is head over every power and authority? Wow. That's interesting statement. Isn't it? Who is here over every power and throne? Now, now get the verse, get the flow of the verse again. Right? In him, okay? In him lives all the fullness of the Godhead body. Okay? That's it. That's, the, that's that one. For, for, and you are complete in him. Okay? The flow of it. Okay? And you are complete in him. And now he's finishing off and saying, the one who's, who is complete, you are complete in, who is the head of all principality and power. He's just taken it to the, the enormous level. Like it's pointing out of the sky and you can't see it. He's taken it to this huge level. The one who is in you and me is head of all principality and power. 
He's supremely above all other things, all other powers, totally and utterly. Without question, that's who he is. Absolute ruler and king, our Lord. There's no challenges, no challenges, none at all. But what he's saying is that we don't need anything else or anyone else to complete our lives and help us fulfill our purpose in God. I mean, anything from the world to help us complete our purpose in God. We don't need, we don't need governments. You know, statism is the latest word that's coming out there. You know what statism is? It's, it's the, the rulership of the, the government, governments and parliaments. Statism, they're, they've got the status over your life. This is, this is what they're calling it, statism. You are meant to go to the governments to be rescued from everything that happens. Um, statism. Sorry. Yeah, that's what they that's what they believe should happen to society. That's why they're going for a one world government. That's why they're heading for all of those things. Um, it's all happening. And you the monetary system, everything is going to be so we're dependent on the elite, the government. But that's why we really need to get a hold of that scripture. Yeah. yeah. We really need to get a hold of that because yeah. Yeah. it will eliminate the Yes. yes. That yes. people have yes. in what's coming down the line. Because it is coming. Yes. Yeah. And people are fearful of it. Yeah. yeah. So that if we walk in the power and the authority that Christ has given us, yeah. that will actually eliminate the fear that we have. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep looking to Him. This is yes. what this is saying. God is so far and above everything else. Yeah. You know, the, the other day they're talking about AI, artificial intelligence. You know, people are taking pills now. Testing out how to be like a transhuman with with AI. Okay, and we've got chatbot that come out. You can write an essay for you in a few seconds, a complete essay, and wow. um, it's, it's come out. All all that kind of things, all the technical stuff. It's only going to increase and increase and increase like that. But what what the Bible is saying? Look who is above every other thing. Who is above all? to get our eyes onto that, our trust into that. He's the head above all things. He's the head. So, I felt like, wow. I was worn out by the end of that. I thought, that's so enormous. And I don't even think I've touched the surface. There's so much more to learn from this scripture. And I, and I really hope you, it's whetted your appetite to go home and look at it and think about it and ask God about it. But I, I did have this question. I thought, so why, why God, aren't we seeing um, more of this authority and power of God? You know? Why aren't we seeing more of it? And I thought, yeah, because it's there. This is what God is saying. And I think, I, I think mainly it's because we haven't believed and received it as truth into our life. You know? It's much easier to work out of your own parameters and your own thinking, much safer. Our hearts feel it's much safer. Well, if I pray for that person and something doesn't happen, you know? or if I tell them about Jesus and they're, and they're a Muslim or something and, and they're offended, um, you know, we, we, we want to work out of our own parameters. Psychologists say the first thing that happens when we go into a place that we're not familiar with is their heads are going, is it safe? Am I safe? That's what they say. I don't know if it's true, but that's what they say. Is it safe? That's what they're thinking. And so we, it's easier to work out of our comfort of being in, the, in our own parameters and, and the things we know. And so we, we accidentally block out what God wants to flow through us. We don't mean to. It's accidental, but it doesn't flow through us because we want to feel safe. And it's our lack of trust and faith in what God can do. Right. Um, but again, it's not deliberate. But I thought there was one other thing that we need to mention. Um, so the Apostle Paul was talking about this amazing verse, but he wasn't just talking to individuals, he was talking to the church. So this isn't just for individuals. 
This is for the church. It's for the church body. He was talking to the body of Christ at Colossae. It didn't matter that he didn't know them, he hadn't been there, you know. He knew they were the body. And it's the body, each one of us, the body, that has to now take hold of this. When we all, we all, even if it's only a bit, hopefully it's the whole lot. But when we all grasp this fullness of what God has given us as the body, then, then nations will change in the day. They will. Nations will change in the day. As the Bible makes it. Because it's about the body. Our problem has been, again, accidental that the body has been, we know, separated. Yeah. One over there that thinks they've got it right, the other, they think they haven't got it right. It's the division of the denominations, the two D's. When the body grabs it, then we will see the power. Unleashed like never before. Amen. Last scripture. Um, if you're in Colossians, you can go back a couple of pages to Ephesians. Chapter 3. Verse 10, chapter 3, verse 10. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, let's read the rest. In him in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Yes, boldness and confidence through faith in him. Did you get that? Now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church, this is Paul, to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. This is our job. To make known the manifold wisdom of Christ. To the principalities and powers. That's why we were praying Friday night. That's why we're going to keep praying. That's why God is building up, rebuilding, strengthening His church. You and me. The next move. Manifold wisdom of God. It's Ephesians 3:10. Did you say cloned? Cloned, yeah, I think that's the closest I can say. The actual vision was absolutely Jesus being extracted out of the throne. So the impartation of his spirit. Yeah. And so Jesus has forgotten the Father. When we accept Jesus, then the Father his spirit into us. So we have the Father's spirit. The Father, the Father was, was it. He got Jesus. And Jesus has the same spirit. And we, when we accept Jesus, then we are given the spirit as well. We're given the Father's spirit as well. Okay, um, if you're not sure that I'm with you there, and I probably don't like the word cloned, but uh, thanks, Nigel. Uh, that's, I'm just giving it out there. People can take yeah. it and, and think about it and yeah. just read the word, yeah. and the Lord will show you. But, yeah. Okay. I think the Trinity.
Trinity is Father, Son, and Spirit, and they're all three separate parts of the Godhead. And Ellen Y used to say that they are so in unity as to be one substance. One spirit. That's what I'm saying. One, one substance. There's so much in unity, but three distinct persons. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I don't know about cloning one to the other, but anyway. Thank you, thank you. Let's um, finish in prayer. And uh, we bless you. We bless you, God. We ask that you will move in our hearts, Lord, from this word today. And take us into a new place of, of stronger faith and belief in, in what you have given us. Thank you, God, that we are complete in you. You have filled us with the fullness of your Godhead, with who you are. So, Lord, I thank you and praise you. May this word not just fly out of our thinking, Lord, but make us motivated, I suppose is the word, to get into your word deeper and stronger, and to embrace it and to believe it with all of our hearts. Lord, keep moving in your church, we pray. Keep empowering us, Lord God, to grow stronger and stronger, more like you. Lord, we thank you today. Thank you today. We'll just pause for a moment before we finish. You may have your own prayer of God. So just pray what you want to pray to him now. Just, you can do it quietly or you can do it out there. It's okay. Thank you, Lord. Let's just wait for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We bless you this morning, Lord, and we thank you. Take us to new places in you, we ask, Lord God. And, uh, and, and we bless each other this morning. And we send each other out, Lord, in the power of the Spirit of God. Lord, open the doors for us this week, we pray. And give us spiritual sight to see what you are asking us to do. Oh, Lord, that's our prayer. And thank you. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Anyone would like any prayer, uh, hesitate to ask.